So, Arthur, what do you think of the Sussexes' recent royal statement? I think it was, uh, I think it was a bit, well, I think it was a little bit insolent. I think it was a little bit, uh, I mean, it was written obviously by a lawyer, an American lawyer, by the, by the sounds of the way it's written, who doesn't understand quite how it works here. You know, when the Queen says you can't do something, you can't do it. And, and that's it. I mean, she's not saying it because she's been spiteful to Harry, who she absolutely adores. Uh, but it's because it's the law, it's, it's part of the company's act and you can't do that. And you certainly can't use a royal title to, uh, for commercial gain. You know, they can't have tea towels and, and cups with their, with their brand on it. It's, it's not on. Uh, you, you know, Prince, Prince Edward, when he married Sophie, he, he had a film production company and Sophie had a PR company. And they both had to pack that up because it was conflicting with their royal duties and then they joined the royal firm. So there's been, you know, people have tried it, but it doesn't work and the Queen doesn't want you to do that. Now, some royals, people say, well, you know, Prince, uh, the Duke of York's, Prince Andrew's um, girls, Eugenie and Beatrice, they work in the private sector, but one works in an art gallery and I think the other one does something similar. And that's just not for commercial gain, that is because they have to earn an income, because they, they're not uh, part of the sovereign grant. So Harry, um, I think Harry knows that. And I think the fact that the Queen gave, let them do everything, let them keep Frogmore Cottage, come and go when they want, and left the door open them for, for them to return to the royal family after a year, I think tells you everything you want to know about the relationship the Queen has with Harry. So I say, you know, whoever wrote that uh, statement and put it on their website, it was it was insolent. Yeah, I think it was an. Inc I think it was. Uh, it just speaks of um, lack of respect for the Queen, and uh, and I don't agree with it. You know, I think uh, Harry's chosen to quit the royal family. That's fair enough. Everybody should determine what they do in life. But if you're doing that, then you quit. You don't take what you want out of it and leave the rest. You can't, as they say, have your cake and eat it. Um, but I don't think that will affect them anyway. I think that Meghan and Harry will have a very successful career in America and Canada. I think they'll be in huge demand, whether they're called royal or not. Uh, I don't think it will affect them at all. So despite the Sussexes dropping the word royal from their foundation, is it right that they should go out and make a load of money off their royal backgrounds? I don't think um, making money is such a, a bad thing in life. I think that's a, that's a thing we all try to do. We all try to uh, look after our families and making money. And Harry's got to make an income. Obviously, he's no longer getting paid by the sovereign grant. And he has expenses and staff to keep. So he has to earn some money. And I don't think that's anything wrong with that. And if he gives a talk and he gets a, uh, half a million quid, for half a million pounds for it, that's fine. If Meghan does something, and she gets money for it, that's fine. I think that's fair enough. They say they're going to donate a lot of it to their charitable foundation, which I think they will do. And there'll be obviously a lot of people benefit from that. So making money is not the problem. Making money on the back of being a royal member of the royal family. If your build is, is Royal Highness Prince Henry of Wales uh, is going to speak a, 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 for a, a group of bankers, then they're, they're making money out of the royal, commercially making money out of the royal family. That's not right. Now, if, in fact, uh, they do that, then, uh, then it's against company law. And I don't think there's anything morally wrong with it, but it just doesn't sit well with, uh, with, the, with, the, with the family and most of the people in this country. How do you think the Queen would have reacted to the Sussexes' statement that they put on their website? I mean, the statement was pretty petty, wasn't it? It was, it was, it was, yeah, a bit stupid. And also, as I say earlier, you know, it was a little bit insulting. You know, I mean, uh, the thing about when Harry's ever spoken about the Queen, he speaks with absolute love and respect. <clears throat> and I suspect uh, if he'd have thought it through, he would have probably uh, had that completely rewritten. I mean, it was written by a lawyer. There's words in it I don't think Harry knows. I don't think I know. That, that were used and, and words that um, uh, in many ways were, I was trying to think of another word, and it was, it was yeah, it was, it was stupid. It, was, um, it wasn't thought through. Um, I mean, I've worked with Harry for most of his life. He is an absolutely outstanding member of the royal family. He is one of the 
best people to work for, one of the nicest people to work for. He's always trying to help you. And I've had some wonderful pictures with him over the years. Wonderful pictures. Pictures I'm very proud of. And, um, and when I see now this road he's taken, where um, he's got to more or less start a whole new career, I kind of, not feel sorry for him, but I, I, I wish him well, but I hope after a year he rethinks and comes back and rejoins the firm because, you know, he's a boy, i never had to worry about parking his car. He's never had to worry about uh, sorting out his tax return or his insurances. All this is going to be new to him. No one's going to do it for him now. He's got to either do it himself or employ someone to do it. And, uh, and he's going to find life, as most of us do, uh, pretty tough when you've never, after he's 35 years of age and he's, and he's never had to do anything like that. Um, and he may wish that he'd never gone down that road, who knows? But of course, it's what his wife wants. And I think what Megan wants, as they say, Megan gets. And, uh, and he's so much in love with her. He'll do anything to, to keep her happy. And if this is what the price is, he, he'll pay it. Because, um, you know, there's no secret uh, agenda here. He has made it very clear that he wants to leave the royal family and he wants to do something for themselves. I think that's quite commendable and it takes a lot of courage to do that, you know. And there's, I mean, when you, you know, they're, they're, it's very, it's a great life for the royal family here. A lot of, a lot of privilege, but with that comes a lot of ex expectation of duty. Harry doesn't want to do the duty, so he's leaving. And I think, you know, good luck. I hope it does all right for yourself, Harry. But personally, I wished he was uh, staying. So you've, as you say, you've known Harry for a long time. Do you think that it's just Meghan that has caused him to go down this kind of path of decline where he's perhaps making statements which don't exactly respect the Queen? Well, you know, there's only one common denominator here, isn't there, which is uh, when he got married. I mean, um, you know, Meghan is, I thought that first year that she was sensational. I went all the way over the country with her, went to Ireland, went to Morocco. You know, she was, uh, she was fantastic. She, um, she was really uh, excellent. She worked hard. She, she did everything right with the, uh, the people. She was engaging. She said the right things. But um, there was a lot of bad press she got. She felt, Harry felt that she was being unfairly treated by the media. I don't think so because there was no paparazzi pictures taken of her. They were never hounded uh, at engagements or privately by paparazzi. If they were, none of the pictures appeared in any of the British papers. And of course, um, there was some stories that were they, they were, some of them were a bit, um, what shall I say, hurtful. But those stories mainly came from our own family. They were, we were just the, the messenger. And often the messenger gets blamed for, for the story. But in fact, the stories were coming uh, from, from her family. Now, she doesn't seem to get on with any of her own family. And it seems that she's now not getting on very well with members of the royal family. So, uh, so I would say, yeah, I think uh, if Mary, Harry had married someone from this country, uh, one of his former girlfriends, I think he would be uh, doing exactly what was expected of him, royal duties, and doing them with a great spirit and, and still smiling. Do you think that the bitter exchange between the royal family and the Sussexes will continue for a long time? I don't think, I don't think this is going to get out of control, no. I just think this is a one-off mistake. I don't think this is going to happen again. I mean, as I said earlier in this piece, you know, Harry has tremendous respect for the Queen and his father. And he, and he loves his brother, in spite of all the stories you read that there's, there's um, a problem between them. You know, they, those boys, they grew up together, they were so tight, they were so, you couldn't get a cigarette paper between them, they were so close. And I watched them together and I watched them behave together, I watched them play football together, um, and they are just very, very close. So I don't think this is going to happen. Harry's not going to fall out with his father and, and his grandmother and his cousins and his nephews and nieces. He's not going to do that. He's going to stick with it. He's going to be, uh, try and please Megan. Try and keep everybody happy if he can. I mean, he's a, he's a thoroughly decent guy. You know, he served in two, two tours of duty here, overseas in Afghanistan. He, um, he's, he's done everything he possibly can for wounded soldiers, for poor kids in Africa. I mean, 
sick kids in this country. I mean, I've seen him with children. He's fantastic. He's, he's just a great ambassador for this country. And unfortunately, we're going to lose him for a little while. I just hope it's not going to be for too long. What kind of effect do you think that all of these events are having on the Queen? I mean, she's gone through lots of events such as Prince Andrew recently and also Peter Phillips, her grandson divorcing and of course Megxit. I think she must be, I uh, saw a picture in the paper this morning, she looked very concerned about things. I think she must be thinking a lot. I think obviously the biggest problem she's got is Prince Andrew. I think he is uh, her own son who is struggling at the moment to cope with all this adverse publicity that's going down. The fact that there seems to be a, a concerted uh, effort to humiliate him as much as possible and, uh, and to get him into a court. But he's done nothing wrong, he's committed no crime. Uh, whatever he's done, if he did it or he, he says he didn't, whatever happens, it's, uh, it's not, no crime's been committed. He's not going to be charged with anything because there's nothing to charge him with. And, uh, and they just want to get their day in court. And I suspect that the bottom line is that it's all about money. Who wants to get how much for, for what, you know? And I think, uh, I think he's doing the best thing. He's withdrawn from public life, hopefully for not too long, because I find him a very nice man to work with. And, uh, and hopefully it'll be resolved. But uh, I think the Queen is obviously very worried about that. In fact, recently up in Sandringham, she went to church on Sunday and, and Prince Andrew accompanied her and I thought that was lovely. Of course, Meghan and Harry, are uh, another problem, but that's a problem that's going to be resolve itself. I don't think they'll stay there forever. I think they'll be coming back more and more, and I think Harry will miss it. I think he will miss the life with the family. I mean, America's great, Canada's great, but it's not as great as here, and he knows that, and I think he'll be back. So I don't think that problem's going to be long term. Oh, Peter Phillips. Well, Peter Phillips. I've been married for over 20 years to that woman, and. Uh, so, you know, it's a personal thing. I think the Queen understands three of her own children were divorced um, and one in four marriages fail in this country. So is she, they're just another statistic. Um, I mean, he's the oldest grandchild, Peter Phillips, obviously. They're very fond of him and they must be fond of the children as well. And they will probably feel bad about it, but it's not as serious as uh, Andrew. And it's certainly not as worrying as uh, Prince Harry, so I think she'll cope. Look, she's had a lot of crisis in her time. She's had a lot of heartache in, in her time. And, uh, and she's a very, very strong woman, and I think she'll, she'll cope well. Thank you very much, Arthur Edwards. You're welcome.